Since ancient times, there's been a prophecy. We're following a developing story of a strong earthquake in Taiwan and a tsunami. Uh -huh. Thank you for joining us, first of all. We appreciate it. So many people here in the Northeast were already unsettled. This prophecy foretold three truths. First, earthquakes would rattle the world. And then... The sun will be blocked from our eyes. Lastly, lightning will strike the earth. It's down! What's up, Centennial? This is your favorite host, Cammie G, and welcome to the 24th episode. My name is Coach Nixon. I am the head track coach of the Girls and the Boys squad, and I coach the throwers. My name is Cameron Walker. Um, I am an assistant track coach for the Boys and Girls uh, track and field team and I also rock out with the special ed department. My name is Michelle Martin, and this is my first year coaching the Knights. My name is Coach Modi, coach the high jumpers and the hurdlers. I'm a coach because I recognize the impact that my coaches had on me when I was uh, involved in athletics. And athletics was something that was a major part of my life and it continues to be a major part of my life and I wanted to, to have that same kind of impact on young people's lives as well. I love competing and I love being able to help um, my students, my athletes uh, develop into better people, uh, both on the track and off the track. I am very passionate about helping these athletes achieve their goals and coaching has been an integral part of my life. Uh, pretty much my entire life I've worked with kids. I am a coach uh, because I wanted to give back and I wanted to uh, be a mentor as I was mentored uh, growing up. So my definition of a team is a collection of individuals who have goals that are pertaining to themselves that come together to work towards a commonality goal as a group as a whole. Hard work has to do with success. Um, things are not going to necessarily fall in your way the, uh, the way that you want it to. So if you can get accustomed to, if you can get used to the grind, the process, uh, the steps that it takes for you to be successful, then you can take that approach and use it towards anything that you do in life in order to be successful. Hard work in track is being able to um, sacrifice, but at the same time, be resilient and uh, encouraging enough to come back again the next day and go back at it. As long as you continue to put your best foot forward and put your mind to it, you can do it. Advice I would give to my younger self, I would find my grind. And what that means is find what I'm bad at, find what I'm good at, and find time to grind. Find time to work at it and hone it and perfect it. Uh, my name is Lauren Guiney, I'm a sophomore, and my favorite thing about track is probably all the relationships that you make uh, throughout the season, and it's just a whole bunch of new friends, and it's all just really supportive and fun to be around. My name is Nia, I'm a senior, and my favorite thing about track this year is just watching the team grow throughout the season and cheer each other on as we all hit our PRs and have fun at the meets. Shout out to my team, let's go. This is Man on the Street, Solar Eclipse Edition, brought to you by Hoel. Can I answer some Down questions? Do what? Man? You mind answering some questions? You already answered some questions. <laughs> this isn't plugged in. It, it's, it's, it's in. Do you have any conspiracy <laughs> theories about the solar eclipse? Um, no, but I've heard some interesting ones. I'll I just heard one that said that um, the, solar, no, yeah, the solar eclipse is to make the earth dark so that the government can reboot the pigeons. <laughs> no, not with Greta, not with Greta. Pigeons? So the aliens, what they do is they come in and then they attack the sun um, to make it look like a toenail. Do you have any conspiracy theories about the solar eclipse? Uh, mine uh, tells me, a, when I look up here, it tells me a certain candidate to vote for. So I don't know if that has anything to do with any, any conspiracy right. theories. Yo, so you know how the moon is a cheese, right? 
Yeah. Why course. doesn't it melt when it goes in front of the sun? This is on the freezer. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. it is cold in space. Yeah, it's cold in space. I mean, you know? it's, yeah. it is cold. Bro. No, like it's actually melting. We just can't see the side that's melting. You know. That makes sense. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, that's a good that's theory, right? Yeah, that that's makes sense. All right. All right. Um, so basically, what happens is you put these glasses on, and then it looks like a toenail. All right. Do you know what the solar eclipse is? Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. What? All right. What is it? It's it's, it's um it's when the sun, you know, it needs to base bills, right? So it turns off for a bit, and then it comes back. It's when the moon covers the sun. There you go. You know what the solar eclipse is? It's right up there. Next question. Do you know what the solar eclipse is? Uh, yeah. What is it? Uh, the moon and the uh, sun is aligned, so it's casting a shadow on the earth. Since the moon is cheese, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it melt in front of the sun? Is it really cheese, or is that just what they want you to think? But they say it's cheese. What if it's fondue? It's Since the moon is cheese, right? Why doesn't it melt when it goes in front of the sun? It's expired. <laughs> yeah, it works. That works. Yes. Good answer. So the moon is cheese, right? Why doesn't it melt when it goes in front of the sun? It's not blue cheese. It's cheese. The, the moon is cheese. No, it's not. It's rock. I have a question for you though. What cheese is the moon? It's Swiss. You see all those holes? Swiss? You see all those holes? It's Swiss <laughs> no, it cheese. is not Swiss. What other kind of cheese? Parmesan. Wasn't it white, cheddar. Like cheddar white cheddar. Cheddar cheese? White cheddar. White cheddar. No. No. Yeah. No. All right. Never. Alright, whatever. Whatever. Hey everybody, Mr. Manny here. Hey, your word of the week is wabbit, which means feeling very tired, weak, and not very healthy. Yo. Yo, you okay? I'm feeling very rabbit with the flu. I'm sorry, do you need like any water or food or anything? No, I'm just trying to go back to bed. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathleen Jordan. I am a junior and I'm doing Fulton Film Festival. My name is Jesse Ganson. I'm a sophomore and I'm doing Fulton Film Festival this year. My name is Anaya Mays. I'm a sophomore and I'm doing Fulton Film Festival this year. Uh, my name is Doug Chanko, ninth grade, and I'm doing Fulton Film Festival this year. My hope is that we're able to accurately portray what story we're trying to tell and that we can execute it correctly. My hopes for this project is that me and my group place in the categories and hope that we do really well for this. The inspiration for our film came from a movie. It's, I think it's called like From the Sunset or like By the Sunrise or something like that. I don't know, it like, it's inspired Ethan and so um, yeah, that's like our inspiration. Uh, my inspirations for my films. So I'm very inspired by like weird old comedy movies um, like Scott Pilgrim from the 2010s, just like um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, a lot of stuff where it's like bizarre humor, fast paced. My biggest inspiration as a director is Edgar Wright, so I'm trying to have flashy visuals in my movies like he does in his. Our inspiration is we're pulling from a lot of movies that we all enjoy, like we've been talking about La La Land, the show The Bear, Another movie called Close. We just are like pulling from a lot of different movies. One challenge we're facing is that the truck that we were going to use for our, for our film, it keeps breaking down. So it's like broken, but hopefully it's not broken when we film. One of our main challenges is probably the timing of each shot and making the film long enough to the requirement of the time. The prompt this year was all right. I feel like they gave us a lot of stuff to work with. Um, having a dog toy I thought was an odd pick, but like the character name is pretty standard and the line of dialogue I can see being used in a lot of different situations. I think the prompt is good. I think the dog toy is going to be tricky, but I like the name. The line of dialogue is good. I think we got it.
Oh, hey, Manny. What? No. Hey there. How does a man on the moon cut his hair? Eclipse it. <sighs> Don't trust atoms. They make up everything. What do you call a happy cowboy? A jolly rancher. I ordered a chicken and an egg online. I'll let you know. Why did the chorus get struck by lightning? It had a conductor. How do you weigh a millennial? In Instagrams. Uh, Did you know an apple a day keeps the doctor away? At least if you throw it hard enough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, why do melons have weddings? Because they can't elope. Honeydew, get it? No. Did you hear about the Italian chef who died? He passed away. Spring is here. I got so excited. I almost wet my plants. That one was a good one. Your curl of the league is yellow, just like this fugal. This foul pole is also yellow. My name is Zach Emick, and I'm a senior. I'm Bella Ogens, and I'm in 11th grade. I'm Nick Martina, and I'm in 11th grade. My name is Ethan Muth, and I'm a senior. I've been playing golf for a year now. I've been playing golf for about three years now. I've been playing ever since 7th grade. I've been playing golf for three months. What got me into playing golf was probably my dad, big inspiration of me playing golf and just continuing. I wanted to play a sport and I don't like running and also golf is just a very relaxing sport I feel and it's not contact, it's not a contact sport so I just wanted to play it and you could play it like your whole entire life. But growing up my dad has always played golf, he played college golf so just growing up playing golf with him that's what got me into it. I would dabble in some golf with my father on the weekends. My favorite memory playing golf is probably, we did cryotherapy pretty recently and we, like my whole team came and we had a lot of fun and then we went to dinner afterwards and it was like good for like team bonding. We just had a lot of fun. Favorite memory was probably making it to States last year. It was just something I never got to experience and it's pretty cool and hope to do the same next year and win it all this year. My favorite memory is when I got a hole in one. Probably breaking 70 for the first time is my favorite, which is my personal best. A piece of advice I'd give for aspiring golf players is probably like don't get in your head because it is a hard sport, but don't overthink it um, and just be confident and willing to learn. So don't sweat the bad shots and just worry about what you can control and just have a goldfish memory and just forget. It might be hard in the beginning. It might feel really weird and be out of the ordinary, but just keep going and you'll get better the more you play. Join the golf team. Join the golf team. I recommend that you guys should all join the golf team. Your bird of the week is a toucan, and there's one right there. What's up Centennial and welcome back to Flying Facts with Southwest Mike. Now yeah, I have a trivia question for y'all. Which is the busiest airport in the state of Florida? It could be Tampa, but you are wrong. You could say it's also Miami or Fort Lauderdale, but again, you are wrong. The busiest airport in Florida is actually Orlando International Airport. Now you might be thinking, why Orlando? Well due to Orlando having several theme park attractions such as Disney World and Universal Studios, tourists come here in droves. Low-cost carriers are so dominant at this airport that they operate over half the operations at this airport. Think about that. Half of the airport is just low-cost carriers. Spirit and Frontier are massive hubs here, 
along with Southwest, who then are expanding like crazy at this airport, as well as JetBlue, who literally have a hotel designed just for their flight attendants and pilots, as this is one of their big crew bases. Orlando International Airport first opened in the 1940s as McCoy Air Force Base. However, in 1981, it began commercial operations. Orlando area has so many tourists coming, they actually have a second airport called Sanford, which is exclusively for low-cost carriers. Our number of the week is 29, because there's 29 days left of school. And that's it for this week's Centennial. Seniors, remember that next week is Spirit Week, so don't forget to dress up. I hope you guys enjoyed our episode, and we'll see you next week. Go Knights!